Let's look at a cross section here together. A uh, cross section of the thoracic cavity. I want for you to kind of just take in the, the space utilization here. So the thoracic cavity, which is above the abdominal cavity, the thoracic cavity contains the heart. We've seen the heart in an earlier chapter. Um, it's got the, let me point to this picture. So this is a cross section. You can see a valve on the heart right there. Um, we've also got the trachea, cross section through the trachea. It splits into the, the, the primary bronchi. We've got the esophagus. Um, we've got the thymus. Um, the thymus is right above the heart. It's not real clear in this picture, um, but thymus is located in, in the thoracic cavity. And then um, look at the rest of this space. So all of this stuff on the sides, this is all lung tissue. So the lungs take up a huge amount of space actually in the thoracic cavity. You can check out this picture over here. This is an x-ray of the lungs and all of this dark space is, is air. Uh, so that's, that's the lungs right there. Um, so it takes a lot of space in order to accommodate all of that surface area that we mentioned earlier for gas exchange to, to take place on. Um, there are two things I want to point out to you here because these are going to come up in uh, a little bit later in the, in the well, on the next slide. Um, so two different pleura right here. We've got the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura. The parietal pleura, this is a lining um, for the whole thoracic wall. So it lines not just the lungs, but the whole thoracic wall sort of provides an, in, uh, it encloses that area, separates it off from other body cavities. The visceral pleura, this is a membrane that covers just the lungs. And these two pleura, they are side by side. Uh, there is a, technically there is a space between them that's called the interpleural, intrapleural, excuse me, intrapleural space. And this is going to be actually very important uh, when it comes to, to pressure uh, control of the lungs. So these two pleura, just take a note, okay, again, parietal pleura lines the whole thoracic cavity, visceral pleura, it lines the lungs. Hold that thought, let's move on here. So ventilation, ventilation is the process of breathing. This requires us to move air. Um, and what does air do? Air doesn't, we can't just like will air to move in a certain direction. Air follows some rules. Air moves always um, from high pressure to low pressure. It follows those, those physical rules. Um, pressure differences are what drive air to either go into the lungs when we inhale or out of the lungs when we exhale. So a few different types of pressure that are relevant here. Atmospheric pressure, this is the pressure of all of the air around us, right? There, there is air pressure. Um, the intrapulmonary pressure, this is talking about the pressure of air that is in the lungs. So um, one thing we'll, we'll be exploring in a little bit more detail um, coming up is just what happens when your diaphragm moves upwards. Just think about that for a second. If your diaphragm moves upwards, then that's essentially that's compressing the thoracic cavity. And if you compress air, what are you doing? You're making it more highly pressurized. So that helps um, to, to force air to move out of the lungs. So this is all tied to pressure. We also have between those pleural membranes, we have intrapleural pressure. This is something you might not have thought about before. Intrapleural pressure, what is that? There is actually, let me just go back to this picture. There is pressure between those two pleura right there. Um, and this is really key for keeping the lungs inflated, keeping them from collapsing. I'll see that again in just a minute. Okay, so when we are in the process of breathing, Let's just think through these two scenarios in the context of pressure. If we're in the process of taking air in, so inhalation or inspiration is, is another way to say that. Um, during inspiration, what happens is um, the intrapulmonary pressure, so the pressure inside of the lungs, is lower than the atmospheric pressure, right? Makes sense. That means that the atmospheric pressure is going to drive air inwards. Uh, the other way around, if we are in the process of exhaling, this is the one we just thought through with the diaphragm, if we're exhaling, then what has to be true? The intrapulmonary pressure has to be greater than the atmospheric pressure. 
Generally, that pressure difference is about three millimeters of mercury if we were to measure it. Um, the atmospheric pressure, just it's standard to take atmospheric pressure as zero. It's kind of like our reference point. So pressures that are negative, it's saying it's a pressure that's less than atmospheric. Pressure that's positive, like right here, um, this is a pressure that's greater than atmospheric pressure. Okay, so um, let's see here. Let's talk about this intrapleural space a little bit more. So the pressure, okay, the pressure between those two pleura, this has to be lower than either of these other two pressures. Why is that? Think about what would happen if it wasn't lower. Okay, so if this pressure, if the intrapleural pressure was greater than either of these, then what would happen? Um, the lungs, let's go back to this picture again, um, if the pressure between these two pleura was high, then what would happen is the lungs would be compressed inwards. The lungs would collapse. So there has to be an extremely low pressure, relatively low pressure in that space right there. Okay, so, and that has to be true regardless of what phase we're at in respiration, whether we're inhaling or exhaling, the pressure's got to be low. So this is why, um, with this in mind, now that we've kind of thought about pressure a little bit, now, um, now think about, okay, perhaps you have heard of having a punctured lung, um, the, the name for that is a uh, pneumothorax. So if there, if there is a punctured lung, what does that mean? Well, what's happened in that case is that there has been um, some sort of a break in those pleura, right? The lung is in here, so a punctured lung would mean that those membranes have been crossed by, by something. It could be something like a broken rib, um, or there can be other causes for this to happen. But in any case, if we make a break right there, that gives air a chance to get in between those pleura. And so that increases the pressure in the interpleural space and that will cause the lung to start to collapse. It could be the whole lung, or it could just be a section of the lung, uh, but in any case, this is why a, a punctured lung can be so serious, is because it's messing up uh, those normal pressure differences that exist. The relationship between the pressure of a gas and its volume is captured with Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law states that these two things are inversely related to each other. Uh, the smaller the volume of a gas is, the greater its pressure is going to be. Um, the larger the volume of a gas, the lower the pressure is going to be. And um, what I would like for you to look at here are these two pictures just to get an idea of what is the volume change that, that takes place during breathing. Um, look at these lungs. So this is um, this is an x-ray during inspiration, so when air is being brought into the lungs, and in this case the diaphragm has moved down, which has decreased uh, the pressure in the lungs, that causes air to rush inwards, and all of this black space is filled with air. Air goes in uh, because, of what, because of that change in the volume of the lungs. Looking over at this one, expiration. So in this case, there is very much a decrease in the lung volume. The diaphragm moves upwards, the ribs move inwards, that shrinks the volume um, in the lungs and causes air to rush outwards because the, the pressure is increased in here. So air is gonna go um, down its pressure gradient. So that's quite a significant change in volume. Just want to draw your attention to that. So we've considered ventilation in the context of air and how it's driven by pressure differences. Let's take a look at this process with our focus more on um, more on other things like what muscles are involved. So starting off, starting off with a person who is just at rest. And when a person is at rest, when their muscles are relaxed, the diaphragm bulges upwards. It's a domed muscle. When it's at rest, it is domed. Uh, okay, so then let's move on over to this picture. During inspiration, that diaphragm, let's just compare the pictures here. See how the diaphragm, it flattens and it moves downwards? Okay, so that's one thing that takes place. The other thing that takes place is the ribs. You can feel this on your own um, body as you breathe inwards. The ribs actually move out and also upwards. And that just helps to expand the entire thoracic cavity. So those two things are what cause the lung volume to increase quite dramatically. And consequently, the pressure decreases and air rushes inwards as a result. During expiration, the diaphragm relaxes. 
Okay, so think about it. When you're relaxed, is do you have like, is there a lot of air in your lungs or does the air move out? When you relax, all the air goes out. Well, not all the air, but a lot of the air goes out. And so what's happening is that diaphragm relaxes, it domes back upwards, and also your ribs do just the opposite of during inspiration. So your ribs move inwards, and those two things work to decrease the lung volume, which increases the pressure and forces the air out of the lungs.